Welcome to 7 Trumpets Prepper and in this video today guys I'm going to show you all how to build a portable roll-off ground mount solar unit. Uh, now you can also adjust this later to be a solar tracker as well. Now there's two ways of building this project. Number one is you get the materials and fabricate it up and we'll go over that some in a minute. Uh, the other one is, is if you have an old satellite mount um, that many people had the large satellite mount, you can take the tubing and build you a frame for it out of angle iron or if you get the old ones uh, many people have that set up on the roofs of your home that you had to put the bricks in on the racking and, uh, or the rack here area um, that's another option and we'll go over this more in depth but really this is the be able to be portable where you can track to the sun I'm going to show you how to build your own combiner box and uh, make this a very easy effective affordable project for you so with that said let's take a look at it now Now guys, on this build, before I go into the step-by-step-by-step, -step -step, I just wanted to take you a quick tour around the finished product here, is these panels that are being used for this project, they are polycrystalline, and I got these from uh, hurricanewindpower.com, and I'll give you the specs on the panels right there, should you want to use the same type for your install. Uh, monocrystalline are good too, um, I prefer energy panels if I'm going to use uh, uh, mono um, they've not let me down yet but now these are the polycrystalline ones right there now uh, what I've done in short is like I was saying in the beginning here is recycled a uh, satellite mount is what that I've done with this and I'll take you through it step by step here just shortly right here is the combiner box we've got to throw some paint on the rest of this but um, in short, what I've done is to save with the all the cables and everything. I just created a combiner box there to go in and everything. But now that's what you will end up with here uh, step by step. And I'll show you how to do it all, especially the combiner. And uh, a great project. You can knock this out in a day, a uh, day or two. And um, also, my grass is kind of high right now. But you can put wheels on it so you can roll this up on a trailer. And uh, with the handles and everything... On the back side, with a pull chain or a pull strap, you can load this up. Two people can load it up and move it wherever you want to go. So it's got versatility to it as well. So with that said, let's get to looking at the components one by one. Okay, guys, now before I begin painting this frame, uh, what I wanted to do is just go over with you real quickly. There's two options um, for making you a solar mount that's really affordable, that's portable. Um, you can, number one, is get you an old SATCOM mount. Now, the way that would work is you want to take with a um, portable port band saw and you want to cut you an L-shaped notch and that'll get rid of that excess bracket that's hanging down under the SATCOM dish. And then once you get rid of the parabolic dish is then you can unbolt that there uh, from the dish, obviously. And once it's removed, then you've got this cup mount and it's also got the radius scales so that you can turn the equatorial mount and also adjust the angle. Uh, so it's perfect for setting your solar angle. And I'll put in the video description below a, a link where you can go and find your solar angle for where you're at in the world. Now, as far as the frame goes, um, the only thing I would say to the SATCOM mount, if you have one of these that used to set out in the yard, if you've got one that was concreted in, all you've got is the tube coming up with the equatorial mount, but what you can do is take that tube down. And then you can cut you some quarter inch angle that's seven foot long by seven foot long, frame out your square, and then come through with the angle pieces to meet it. You can either cut it and bolt it or weld it. It's totally, it's up to you, but just make sure you get your seven foot by seven foot square. And then from there, you will know, uh, you can measure out the rest for how you want to fit your tube in the center. Uh, and come in with these angles here. But now uh, the best uh, option for that is just get you some quarter inch angle iron to do that. But now if you already have the mount like this that many people uh, could just set on the roof and then you put the bricks to hold it down, right here I took some angle iron that had the uh, bolt holes because I was thinking about um, adding some toolboxes and some batteries and things on this later, is I took and added that not only to stiffen the frame, but like I said, to put storage on it as well. And then I added some wheels. Uh, I've got to redo my bracket right there. Uh, but I put some wheels so that I could pick it up and roll it. And we're kind of sitting in the high grass right now where I'm getting this ready to paint. But now as far as the mount goes, once that you do have it finished, is you don't want to come out here with uh, your tubing or your channel 
if you actually just buy the solar channel, I had the uh, one inch tubing. And you know how I am, I always recycle things. So I didn't buy no solar channel. But if you have your channel, then you can obviously just bolt it right to your equatorial mount. But don't put enough channel on here as far as this design goes, enough that you can hold more than three panels because what you'll do is create a sail in the wind. As you've seen in the beginning of the video, my panel ends here and the other one ends here. And that leaves word that I can easily adjust that to for uh, the angle that way. So anyway, I'm going to get this painted and we'll take another look at it. Now at this portion of the build, when you've got your equatorial mount in place with your brackets, uh, what you want to do now is you want to lay your panels out on a flat surface. I did mine on my back porch. And you want to make sure that you're even on the edges. And if you put this across your mount right, you'll have that mounted uh, the proper angle. And then you want to take you a level and run up the edges on the front and on the bottom, or I'm sorry, on the top part would be your top and then on your bottom. And then you're gonna take your Sharpie and you're gonna mark off your hashes for where your bolts are gonna go through. And I'll show you the bolts and stuff I'm using in a minute. And you're gonna hash that off on the insides as well. Because now those four uh, areas right there is what's gonna hold this to it. Now there is another option, is should you choose to do it. Uh, I'm not gonna go that route uh, because I'm just gonna take the time and drill some holes and save some money, but you can take and get you some of the L brackets uh, that's sold for solar mounting and you can just screw it into the uh, angle and then down to your solar frame uh, or solar frame on your panel. So it's totally up to you. That's at your discretion. There's your two options. You can do as I'm doing right now and then drill through, mark my holes and drill through for the mount of the bolt. Um, or you can just get the angle brackets. It's totally up to you. Um, you can also get you some angle iron and just cut you out some brackets and screw them together. That's another option uh, with self-tapping uh, metal screws. So anyway, I'm going to get to work on this and we'll show you the next step. All right, now at this point in the build, we're going to drill this out. Now, I have got a 3 drill bit and I've got a 5 drill bit and uh, also the nuts and bolts that I'm going to be using right here. Uh, get this to uh, clear up. That's 5 sixteenths, uh, 18 by 1 and uh, 1 inch. Uh, that's the hex bolts right there. And then for the washers we are using 3 eighths um, because that's uh, what I could come up with there. But I found that they, they mesh up against the, the bolt head okay so we'll let that fly. Uh, but anyway that's that's what I'm using right there and so I'm going to get that drilled out. Uh, you're, if you get these at Walmart, um, the particular bolts, you're going to need three packs because they only have three bolts in each. Um, so you're going to need a total of uh, eight. Um, so anyway, just uh, some 411 on that, that one pack of washers will do you the whole project. Now while my combiner box is drying here, um, I've got that on the, the paint area for the moment, uh, waiting for that to dry. What I want to point out to you guys is two things. Number one, if you've seen that, uh, portable mount I done in the past you can check the link up there uh, to where I done that single portable mount uh, you'll know that I used old pallet wood to slide in between the frame so that when I dropped out of the metal there from putting all that force on it I wouldn't crush the sails on the other side but instead I'd stop in that wood uh, make sure to do that during your install secondly make sure that when you do have these marked off uh, at the proper distance angles and square and everything that you make sure and measure from your frame mount down to make sure that your equal distances because although it might look you know on the money uh, you could be off by just a little bit and then it'll be all weird looking on the frame mount it'll be kind of crooked looking um, the last thing that I would say to you uh, on this is that when you do you a portable mount now you can take the panels and you can put them even on the racking that's up to you but now what I done is I done like a um, 60 40 offset what I mean by that is I've got about 60 percent of the panels up onto the frame and I've only got about 40% hanging out the bottom and I have a gap between so now what I've done here is I've got it where that when this if I if I set my solar angle really low and I need to move it I won't catch my frame supports that are down on the ground uh, coming up holding my post up and where I have a gap between here I've not got a huge sail in the wind and that also gives me access to easily um, do any wiring modifications or any service that I need to do to my combiner box which should not never need to take place but just in case uh, there's that option there as well so just some quick notes on that 
Okay guys, now at this portion in the build, once that you've got the fasteners in place on your brackets, all that's left to do now is we're gonna put the combiner box in. Now, my advice is to put your combiner box in the center of your panels to the front so that everything's always easily accessible because later when this is on the mount, you're not gonna be able to get up and under and work on it very easily. So with it on the mount and tilted, you're gonna be able to easily walk up, always clean your panels, uh, very accessible, and also the combiner box is right here, easily accessible. So if you need to check uh, to make sure that your panels are putting out or anything like that, you've got no issues there. And also with the design, um, depending on the satellite mount that you use or the, uh, the old TV mount that you use, uh, if you uh, need to adjust the solar angle, uh, as far as uh, delineating it to uh, where you're at on the planet, uh, you can uh, loosen it there easily. And then also on the back, actually setting the angle itself upright, uh, depending on where you're at, you have that access easy too. So um, at this point, really all you've got to do is mount it to the bracket and then begin your combiner box. Now at this portion of the build, we're going to start on our combiner box. Now what you're going to do is you've cut the leads off the solar panels at the end where the MC4 cables are and you're going to save two of those MC4 cables. All right, and now the reason we're doing this is so that we don't have a bunch of Y adapters and all this junk hanging on the back of the thing. We're going to have a really neat box uh, when we're done. Now the box that you're going to need from uh, Lowe's is going to be uh, a marine box. It's the Type 4 uh, 4X 6P and it's a utility outlet box. I think it's the uh, uh, four inch by four inch box. And I cut two of the tabs off and I filed it down there. I'm gonna repaint that. And that's gonna screw on to the mount outside. And I'll show you that in a minute. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my leads, and you can do this ever how you want, but uh, I'm gonna have my leads come in uh, through the back right here. So there'll be one port and the other port sticking out right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this half inch drill bit and I'm going to drill that out, those two spots. And right here, I'm going to stick the threads up through where that I can tighten my cap down onto that. And then at that point, I'm going to take the bus bar right here that I got at Radio Shack. And you can see where I took the Dremel and I cut those notches off right there so that we have an open access. And so what will happen is there'll be the MC4 cable pieces. They'll have a yellow slide in adapter right here spade terminal okay and that will come into there and I'm going to show you this all step by step and then you're going to have the two positives drop into the positive one going out and the two negatives coming in and going into the negative one coming out and uh, I'll drill the ports for those to come in on the bottom uh, more than likely that way no weather or anything will ever affect it and so anyway I'll start with the MC4 cables coming in and then uh, I'll show you the actual uh, cables coming from the panel, how that'll work. And then that way, once all that's screwed into place, we'll just screw that down into that. And uh, we'll be finished with it. Because uh, you want to have the MC4 cables going out into it first. And the ports drilled for the cables coming in. And that way, whenever you get out there and mount this box into place, this is kind of loose at the moment. And then you can just slide that into place with the cables off the panels and tighten it in permanent. Okay guys, now at this point right here we've got the box drilled out and I've worked those MC4 cables through and all we've done is just tighten that back down to cinch it up. And now what we're going to do is take the yellow terminals and we're going to put them onto it right there and crimp them down. And then that's going to go one to that bus terminal there and one to that terminal there and then we'll just tighten that against that and screw it down. And I'll show you that here in just the next step. Now at this portion in the build, uh, what i done real quickly, just a heads up, is I pulled the yalla off of those clips. I just didn't like it. Um, and now at that point, you can screw this down inside there. It's really tight at the moment. Um, so I'm just going to leave that be. Actually, as much tension as there is, it's kind of free float. You might not even have to screw it down unless you just wanted to. Um, but I'm going to drill out now two entry holes here for the positives. And they're going to come in and tie into this. I'm sorry positives over here so the positives will come in and tie in over here and then the negatives will come in and tie in over here and that's gonna uh, bring that out to the point where that you can put your extension on and bring it into 
your uh, charge controller or to your solar generator direct, depending if you have one with MC4 cable, uh, automatic connections like Solaron generators, for example. So at this point now, we'll get that drilled out, get the wires in, screw this on to the mount out there, and you'll see how it looks. All right, now at this point in the build, what we have here is we have the combiner box, um, the marine one, by the way. Make sure that you get the good, um, good solid box that's got the moisture... Uh, protection in it. Um, anyway, you want to make sure and mount that to your cross frame here. And I've ran all my wires that are for the hot over to here and all the ground ones are going to go out to here. And now I'm going to step around the uh, array right now so that we can take a look at the back here. And you can see why that I went to all this trouble. Now I don't have all these wire connectors and all this junk hanging down. I just have these two running into the box in the back and these two coming off here very neatly and what's going to happen now is the only thing I have coming off of this mount is just the MC4, uh, the two drops. That's it. And uh, uh, really, really neat looking. Um, once I get the final paint job on here, it'll be really nicely done. Um, but at this point now, what we're going to do now is just run both of those with the uh, clips on the end into right there into that pin. And all these clips will go into that pin right there. And um, I'll show you that once it's wired. Now guys, at this point in the build, you can see that the wires have came in from the hot side and are wired in, and now that drops right across that bus bar out to the MC4. And you can see the ground side has come in and dropped in and doing exactly the same. Now, uh, just a note, whenever you're wiring this, today is a partly cloudy day, um, hardly any light whatsoever, but there's still just enough that I got those leads a little bit close, and I got nipped just a little bit with electricity, so just a warning there, you know, you can... I get shocked. Um, it's best to work on this final finish part, in my opinion, if you're especially a beginner. It's do it at night time that way. You don't have to worry about it because I've been at this a long time, and even myself, I got a little too close today and got a little bit of shock. So at this point now, what we'll do is we'll put the lid back on it, and we'll move to the final finish. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this build today with me. Um, this project, if you are very economical about it and you recycle a lot of material, um, especially the satellite equatorial mount. This can be a very cost-effective project and gives you the ability to have something that's portable. Uh, should you ever need to take it with you, you could roll this up on a trailer um, and take it to a different property. There's just a lot of versatility with this. Um, furthermore, on your land, you can move it to a different place to use it for a solar generator uh, to hook into. Um, just a lot of great options at the end of the day. So I hope you've enjoyed this build. I hope you uh, learned quite a bit from how to build a combiner box. It's a great thing to know how to do because um, if you don't have MC4 cables, the ability to build the cables and things like that later down the road, uh, just good things to know. So until we see you again here at Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel and another build project, I hope you have a most blessed day in Yahushua name.